dear friends welcome back to microsoft flight simulator and another video this time with an iconic aircraft the antonov 225 i'm pretty sure you are all aware that this uh, aircraft was released by microsoft slash asobo developed by inabuilds and i believe released two days ago i'm kind of late to the party but uh, I don't like to record a video with an aircraft that I don't know because I don't want to waste anybody's time and uh, I don't like to give wrong information which is quite possible when you don't know what you're doing and I decided to hype to cool off a little bit and maybe now I can record a video and discuss the cold and dark startup procedure of this aircraft. We are not going to fly today, this is going to be a video focusing on cold and dark startup and I think this will take around 20-25 minutes and we will eventually do a flight with the Antonov but that will be for a future video. Anyway, we are currently parked at the Antonov airfield in Ukraine uh, where this aircraft usually parks or used to park before it was destroyed and we will jump into the cockpit and do a cold and dark startup and I'll try to explain things as much as I possibly can. Here we are in the cockpit of the Antonov 225. Uh, we have the EFB over here. I have the options to uh, have the text in Cyrillic uh, because, well, this is what this aircraft was uh, in real life and there was no English text in the cockpit and I'll try to remember the positions of the switches and try to guide you through this. So what we are going to do to power up the aircraft and start the engines is uh, we need to first establish electrical power through the electrical power up procedure. We will go over that and then we will do the um, the hydraulic and fuel system setup and then we will eventually set up the payload and EFB and navigation radios autopilot panel or MCP this uh, guy over here and the engine start procedure so hopefully all go smoothly and let's just go and start with the oh my bad uh, start with the electrical power up procedure so to do that, we need to go to the uh, one of the flight engineer stations, which is the electrical system station, and we have the fuel system and engine uh, instruments station over here. So these are two flight engineers. On the opposite side, we have the communications officer over here, and then we have the navigation engineer, navigation officer, uh, whatever it is called, uh, taking care of the the avionics and the navigation systems of the aircraft. So we'll go over here. This is the electrical panel, uh, GPU switch or external power generator. I am using the tooltips so that you at least see uh, which switches are these, even if they are in Cyrillic. Uh, these five switches are the battery switches and we will start by turning them on like so. I uh, assigned them to my controller, so that's why I didn't touch the switches. And now, a couple things are coming to life, such as the, the equipment cooling fans, the equipment that runs on DC power, etc, etc. If you have ground power connected to the aircraft at this point, you can turn the external power on, and you don't have to start the APU right away to do the rest of the startup procedure until you are ready to start the engines. However, we are going to use APU power today, so the APU is over here at the electrical panel at the upper side. Uh, the APU panel is here. So we will uh, start APU 1 and APU 2 and when they are up and running we will continue with the electrical power up procedure. Uh, this is the start guard. We will open this. We will put the APU fire loop to on position. So this is in case uh, if something happens and APU catches fire, this fire loop will uh, put out the fire after detecting it. Uh, we will also turn the APU master 
switch to on this kind of acts like a start master switch because when you start the apu turning this off will not shut down the apu and then we will just hold the apu starter and it should start the apu we will see one of the needles moving so that's sort of a i think the valve open message or starter engaged message something like that uh, but the apu is now uh, powering up we can go ahead and do the same thing for the apu number two fire loop to on starter guard open starter master to on and then push the switch to start apu2 when the apu is started we will turn the bleed air on these are the bleed air switches for two apus they are currently off and these are the apu fill heaters which are set to off so if um if they are like this they are on off. these are off no lights is off if there are lights it means they are on uh, and we don't need fuel heating because it's uh it's warm enough outside so apu number one is online and the rpm is at 100 degrees this is the egt exhaust gas temperature of the apu and we can turn the bleed air on APU2 is almost there, so we can just go ahead, wait a little bit more, monitor the startup, and put the right bleed air switch to on. And we can close the starter guards, or uh, yeah, starter guards. So now we have APU power. We need to go and turn a couple things on as well, uh, namely the APU generators. These switches are set to on. By default, uh, when you load cold and dark, uh, the off position is down like this and the needles go down, showing that the system is not generating any power. If they are on, this should, the needles should be showing and you will see a green uh, circuit completed over here. Uh, we will continue with turning on the rectifiers. There are four rectifiers. Rectifiers are kind of inverters that converts the AC power from the APU to DC power. So we will turn all four on and the bars will light green. And then we have the transformer rectifiers. These are transformers and rectifiers that converts the AC power to DC power, but it also does this uh, in various voltages to power up various equipment on board that requires different DC voltages to operate, such as you know, 12 volt, 24 volt, etc. etc. So now they are on. Uh, we will continue with the avionics uh, buses or master switches that's over here at this top row. You have probably seen this in other uh, Antonov 225 videos. This is at the navigation or navigation officer station. All these switches are the master switches for different avionics and as we turn them on uh, various systems will come to life but this is not the end of it from here we will go to the captain's seat and we have a couple more bus switches over here that we need to turn on for the captain's side this is the DME bus this stays off uh, until after engine run up is complete. I'm not sure why, but this needs to stay off for now according to the checklist from Inibuilds. On the co-pilot side or first officer side, we have even more switches to turn on for different avionics buses. And when we turn this on, this will power the avionics in front of us at the captain's side and the first officer side. Now this is done. They are all on. And this is the electrical power-up procedure completed. So next up is to do the hydraulic system and fuel system setup. We will start with the hydraulic system. There are six hydraulic pumps for each engine. We will open the guards and turn them off as they need to be off for engine start. And how you can tell if I go closer when you press the button goes slightly in when you press again goes out out position is the off position so the hydraulic pumps are now off 
and the fuel system it's in the manual and shows exactly how to set this up uh, for engine start and it's just like this the third one for the first row goes off so these two switches needs to be uh, extinguished and then for the rest the leftmost switch or switches needs to be extinguished so this is the fuel configuration for startup and there's a different one for uh, descent and landing I believe but we will discuss that when we have the other video for a full flight so that's the fuel pan panel setup completed and now we will go and do the EFB payload we have currently some cargo in the cargo hold we can apply this I don't want to go through the ground and open the nose and load a different part of uh, kind of cargo so you can do this on your own time but for the sake of the video we will accept the default cargo preloaded to the aircraft during cold and dark so we will click apply load and what this does is let me show you uh, over here the payload is showing 66.178 tons and this uh, cargo is oh showing zero we can can we configure this oh, okay hold on this is how you do this we can add some cargo manually if we don't want to open the nose like so okay and then that will give us some let's just make this match that will give us some cargo weight 93.9 kilograms and if we go and apply the payload and go to the weights and balances page we should see the same payload uh, cargo 49999 66 so is that including the fuel I am not sure, but uh, current weight is 535, 535 tons. There is slight difference here. I'm not sure why, but uh, if you load the cargo, this is how you apply the payload. And it says applied. I'm not sure what this changes in the sim. Maybe it's not through the weights and balances menu, but this is how you do the payload and the EFB. Uh, the other thing is you can import your flight plan uh from the gps if you have loaded the flight plan to gns 530 here which we can go ahead and select enter to align i'm not going to do that i'm not going to enter a flight plan i have a video on how to enter a flight plan to gns 530 and you can use the world map menu if you don't want to fiddle with the knobs rotating left and right so and you will get the meta information and everything when you load your flight plan from the GPS. Uh, weather, again, same thing. Or you can look up a custom meta. I think UKMM was the... Uh, was it? I am trying to remember the IKEA code of the airport. Maybe the, the GPS will tell us that let's see if we can go to the GPS and see our location and zoom in and maybe see it UKKM UKKM yes uh, UKKM okay I was wrong and you can just search for a meta information to set your altimeters i'm not sure why it is not searching anyway so maybe this is not implemented yet i don't know so that's the efb part done payload is completed uh, main cargo door is closed we will set the autopilot for our takeoff uh, configuration uh, let's say this is in meters by the way and the speed is in kilometers you probably know this already there's a converter here to convert it to feet so let's say we are going to fly at 30,000 feet so that's 9,144 meters and how we change this is we go 
and rotate this knob until we get to 9400 and then I will show you the rest. Yep, it's a little bit faster. 100s, so we'll go up to 9400 and I already forgot what was it. Terrible memory. 9144, okay. 9100 is there. And then we can go ahead, go to the options, select the altitude units to once. Sorry, once, and then we will just set this to 44. So that's the altitude set. Uh, the speed, 250 knots, is roughly 463. If you convert it, you will see the same number. So we will go to 463 on the speed to maintain this speed below 10,000. You can cancel the warnings here. And the last thing is to set our barometric pressure. I will just cheat and press the B key and the sim will set it up for us. Uh, there is the meters, uh, altimeter in meters, and then there is the altimeter in feet and the standby that shows the barometric pressure and the indicated airspeed in knots. Uh, this is also, uh, the speed over here is also kilometers per hour as well. So that is done. And the Navate setup, you just tune the VORs and the course here, or you can just tune the frequency over here, but you don't have the option to adjust the course from here. So you need to go back to the uh, navigation officer panel to do that. So that's the course knob for NAV1 and NAV2. And this will change your uh, course over here. This autopilot is 40 years old and don't expect this to act like an autopilot in a Boeing aircraft so it is it has its own downsides and it's not keeping the aircraft super stable especially the auto throttle is not that great and the aircraft uh, bounces up and down like a whale or dolphin so know that this knob will let you select which navigation source that you will be using so if we select VOR and press this course button, it will follow the VOR1 and the set course. Uh, this is a course select kind of heading. This is two, so it takes the first officer's heading uh, bug uh, to follow. This is course one. This takes the pilot's uh, heading bug and follows the heading. This is off, mo uh, off position, that's VOR2, that follows the VOR2 radio. This is navigation, uh, this follows your GPS flight plan, and then the last one is the approach. Okay, so that's the, uh, the autopilot modes in a nutshell. That's the autopilot uh, toggle switch, guarded switch. This is the autopilot engage button, auto throttle engage button, uh, reset the autopilot and cancel everything. This is, as we discussed, this is kind of LNAV button for you to follow a lateral navigation, either through a GPS or VOR. Uh, this is the wing level button. This uh, keeps the aircraft level, but oh, it keeps the wings level in terms of banking. And it will keep the pitch if you are climbing. So you can still climb, but keep the wings level so that you don't turn left and right. We will talk about where you can use this when we are doing the flight. This is the pitch hold button, so it will maintain a vertical speed uh, at the time of you press this button. Just like the one in uh, 146 Professional, you pitch up and then press this to maintain that pitch. Uh, this will, uh, this is kind of a level change mo mode which maintains your speed and then climbs while maintaining that speed, so the pitch will change uh, as you get into higher altitudes this is the mach hold so that does the same thing but when you switch or when you climb about twenty six thousand feet um, you will switch to mach hold and that will hold the mach value instead of the in indicated airspeed and this one is the altitude hold this will hold the altitude 
at the time you press the button, let's say if you are at 10,100 and press this button, it will hold 10,100. This, this display over here is kind of information on the display. This will show the frequencies that, that, you are, that are tuned to your VOR1, VOR2, approach, uh, ADF1, ADF2. I'm not sure what this uh, KM is or this S is. I have no clue. If you know, let me know in the comments. Over here, you can see your uh, true airspeed ground speed, approach speed, and indicated airspeed. You also see the maximum or the bank angle. And the last one was uh, the selected autopilot speed, I believe, which will match this. Uh, over here, radio altitude, uh, selected altitude, autopilot selected altitude, and indicated altitude. Uh, which you can see here and that's also in meters so be aware and these are different options that you can keep here for information only so that is done let's say we are done with the setup and we can now go ahead and do the engine start so engine start panel is over here we already turned off the hydraulic panels oh by the way I forgot to say we also need to turn on the nav lights during the electrical power-up procedure. Uh, we will go ahead and turn the beacon on too. This is the beacon light, so that's on now because we are getting ready to start the engines. Uh, we will open the starting panel, which is over here. And we can unguard all these uh, switches. Uh, this is the mixture ratio ratio switches and they should be uh, uh, on right and this is how you shut down the engines but this is kind of engine cutoff switch so when you turn it off it, it will stop the engine when they are running uh, you also need to do a hydraulic system check by turning on the center hydraulic pumps and seeing these green arrows light up which means the hydraulic system is working properly and um, the last thing before we start the engines is to go and turn our ADEC system on for all of the engines uh, full authority digital engine control system that's what FADEX stands for. And we can go and continue with the engine startup. So startup panel is here. The engine gauges are at the fuel panel, next to the fuel panel. We will take a look at those gauges when we start the engines. There is an auto start option, which is you will select this and then hit the starter it will automatically start the six engines in sequence and the sequence is one six two five three four or you can do a manual start which is what we are going to do to differentiate from the other videos that are posted to youtube uh, for this aircraft okay i'd like to show how you start the engines manually instead of showing the auto start that has been covered by other content creators so many times all right so where was i i'm just looking at the checklist now um, all right so this is how we are going to do it that's Ember engine 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 starter selectors. So we will select engine number 1. Press and hold the starter. We will see the lights. We can go and check the instruments. Uh, these gauges, these three gauges are uh, N2. And these are M1, if I am not remembering this wrong. Uh, that's I think what they are and 
there are two needles each needle represents one engine so this is the odd numbers are engines one three five and the even numbers are engines two four and six so this is one and uh, two i believe yep this is three and four and that's five and six and the same deal for the N1 gauges. So engine one is pulling up and we can go back to the starter panel and then fire up engine number six. That's the sequence that we are going to follow. Press the starter and hold it for three seconds. We will see the lights coming on. And engine six should be spooling up now. So engine one is now stable we can go back and deselect engine 1 turn engine 1 hydraulic pump on observe the green lights over here close the guard and wait for engine 6 to stabilize and do the same thing this takes quite some time I am going to only show engine one and six the rest is the same you just start up different engines in sequence and the enunciations over here will extinguish when the engine is uh, uh, started so engine 55 uh, it's almost 55 so engine six is now stable we can go ahead and deselect engine six select engine two and select the starter and I will immediately do it for engine 5 I am not sure if this is the correct startup procedure and if you can select two engines at the same time and start so we will hold the starter one more time and hopefully it will not cause any issues or you can do them one by one but so engine 5 is also spooling up too so that's the other engines alright all of our engines are up and running now and what we need to do is our hydraulic pumps are also all on everything is deselected we will guard the switches again close the starter panel and we will go to the electrical panel once more and turn all engine generators on the bars will come on so this is the engine generators this is the apu but we are going to shut the apu down momentarily so apu generators goes off we'll go to the apu panel we'll stop the apus and you will see the rpm gauges going down we will wait for the APU to spool down and when the APU stops we will turn off the fire loops uh, turn off the starter master switches and turn off the APU blades and that will be the after start procedure so it's coming down quite nicely it stops faster than it starts I guess and we are almost there just a little bit more so APU 1 stopped, APU 2 stopped now we can turn off the fire loops turn off the starter master switches and guard them and finally turn off the APU bleeds so now the APU is shut down we will go to the captain's seat and we will select flaps 2 this is the flap setting for the taxi uh, we will arm the ground spoilers that is the frontmost position of the ground spoilers like that so ground spoilers are now armed uh, reverse thrust 
spar or arm is lifted like this. This is done to engage the reversers quickly if something goes wrong during taxi or takeoff. And that will st it will stay like this until takeoff. Um, and we will do a flight controls check. So the flight control uh, displays are here. So we will do full back. That's the elevators. Pull forward. Center. We will do full left. Center. Pull right. Center. And we will do left rudder and Notice there are two rudders on that massive tail of this aircraft and full right and flight controls are free and correct. Uh, we will check the trims, the aileron and rudder trims, I believe that's here. So uh, this is the aileron trim, that's the rudder, oh this is the rudder trim. And it's a little bit different. So the display is here and it is showing the value. So that's zero and that's the aileron trim. It was already zero, but the display looks a little bit different because we are not looking maybe from the top. So those are checked. Nose wheel steering, it's on by default. It's behind this guard and it is on. This is the off position, but if the guard is closed, it turns them on. Uh, and we go to the lights panel. So we turn the taxi lights and the logo lights. So the logo light is here. Oh, the logo light is uh, here. Fuselage right lights are here, so we turn them on. And the taxi light is uh, controlled by these two switches they control the landing lights and taxi lights so if I turn the taxi lights on that should be let me see the outside uh, that should be I think this position taxi and you'll see the lights turning on and if you uh, move this to the up position that's the landing lights and this will uh, retract or extend the landing lights so let me show that too so if I go down that's retract so this is going to extend the landing lights and when I go outside you will see these lights popping out of their housings and if I go to here that will be my landing light setting because it will also turn on these these lights as well. So let's go back to text lights setting and let's retract the lights so they are now retracted and we can move it to the off position so that's the text lights and from here we just go ahead and taxi. So this is the startup Cold and dark startup procedure for the Antonov 225. I tried to explain the manual engine start rather than the automatic engine start procedure that I have seen on YouTube on pretty much every 225 AN 225 video. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. I hope this was valuable information uh, and you have seen something new. If you did like the video, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and if you stumbled upon this video and not subscribed to the channel, please take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button. That helps a lot and uh, also helps this video to reach other flight simmers who are seeking the same content. Thank you for being here with me today and watching this video of Antonov 225 and I will be seeing you in the next video for a full flight with this beast.